Hey everybody and welcome to a competitive Wild Ride with Steve-O. I do believe this might be the first single episode where we've had two different guests and both of them are about to get into the octagon and try to hurt each other as much as they possibly can. We're talking about Sean O'Malley and Cheeto Vera. UFC 299 this weekend. We are here in Miami and it is going down. So we talked to both of these guys. They're both unflappably confident. Um, Sean O'Malley has become just about every bit the star that he said he would. And Cheeto is basically just a terrifying gangster. Um, really interesting to talk to both of these guys. I consider them both friends. Um, it's really tough to, uh, to pick the fight. Uh, I went ahead and did that anyway. Uh, stick around to the end of the episode and you're going to get my picks. But uh, more on that later. For now, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Sugar Sean O'Malley. I'm here. Yes. Good to see you, dude. You're going to be seen, brother. Um, it, it, it's really rad, man. I get, I get a kick out of, uh, you know, if I come up with an idea or a question or something, I'll just FaceTime you out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, like, <laughs> you pick up, man. It's awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, I consider you a bro. Thank you, bro. And uh, <laughs> we, we first had you on the Wild Ride podcast. In Phoenix. Yep. In Phoenix. Yep. I mean, dude, that was 2021. So, like, uh, what a, a good healthy long time ago yeah and uh you, dude you, your episode performed fantastically well uh all the way back then and people are accusing you of not being a a star because of like there what they say there's some shows you've been on that didn't have huge numbers well when millions of people accuse you of not being a star yeah. you're a star <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're a star you're a star. There, there, there's absolutely no question that you're a star. Um, I remember we talked to Danny Trejo, and he, he was all, all about fighting and, and boxing. He was like in the, a prison boxing champion. <laughs> and he said that uh, fighting gods are very jealous gods, and if you uh, distract yourself by pursuing acting or anything like that, the, the fighting gods will smite you. Yeah. But then it occurs to me that during fight week, They've got you doing so much <laughs> press, so much like uh, interviews and obligations that like the, the, it wouldn't it kind of serve you to already be able to handle some distractions. Yeah, I mean the work's already done though. You know the, what you do the last twelve weeks before the fight is kind of where you can't be distracted. Fight week, you know, it's not like we're learning new shit or trying to get in shape. We've done it all. We've done the work. Now we promote the fight. So. It is what it is, you know, we're running low on calories, and, uh, you know, I, I could feel better, but I don't feel too bad, and it, it's not, you know, I enjoy doing this stuff, so I, I'd rather be doing this than, just, you know, just sitting there thinking about food. Do you have more weight to cut, or oh, are you yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's Wednesday right now, so we got, obviously, Thursday. Thursday nights when you really, that's when you hit the hot tub and you really get the rest of the weight off, so yeah, still got a good amount to cut, but... uh you know, I've done it 18, 19 times. It, it works out. Yeah. Oof. Um, you've been talking about going up to featherweight. Is that... Uh... That's more so just, you know, I'd like to fight Elia. I think it's a big fight. Yeah. I'm a bantamweight. I, I like this weight class. I'm going to stick here for a little bit. But also, you never fucking know. You know, I could change my mind in two months. But for right now, I'm a bantamweight. You know, I would love that that to fight Elia if he continues to be the champ. I continue to do my thing. That's a big fight down the line. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's a little big. He's he's short. Yeah, I mean, on your behalf, watching uh, Marab against Cejudo, mm -hmm. I thought, ooh, Marab looked kind of scary. And uh, same thing with with uh, Elia against Volk. Yeah, on your behalf. I mean, I Elia thought. looked scary. Elia put Volk's light out. Mm -hmm. What did Marab do? Barely yeah. beat up, you know, he didn't barely, he did barely beat him one to two rounds, I mean, two to one. 
against Henry, who looked like he was about 52 years old. Like, <laughs> if you want to talk about scary, like Elia was scary. Elia was scary. Mrab's yeah. got that crazy pace to where, I mean, it is scary if you if you gas someone out and they can't defend themselves, you you know. But Elia's, I mean, if we're using the word scary, that's Elia, not not necessarily Mrab. Mrab's a very dangerous opponent, but Elia's scary. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this fight with, with Cheeto, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell on myself. I, I thought, maybe I just had some weird memory, but I thought that, the the last time you fought Cheeto, that what happened with your leg was the result of masterful leg kicking on <laughs> Cheeto's part. And, and Scott really pushed back on that. Scott, <laughs> Scott says, he, he sent me the fight. He said, dude, you have to watch the fight again. And really, nothing happened to your leg, but like what happened? I mean, he it, he threw the kick. I mean, the arguments like he threw the kick. He did throw the kick. It hit my perennial nerve. How many times has that happened in fights since then? You know that to where their leg completely shuts off. And yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I've never lost sleep over it. You know, here we are, three and a half years later, and I get a you know rewrite it. Yeah, yeah. but like he, the last time he kicked you, you know, and the, until when that incident happened, like had been like minutes. Well, well, he hit my nerve in my, and I kept rolling my ankle. I rolled my ankle probably six, seven times in the fight because I, you know, lost uh, this motion of my foot. So I got what was called drop foot. So every time I would walk forward, my foot wouldn't come up; it would bend down. So I kept rolling over my ankle. Um, but yeah, he. I mean, I'm not gonna deny he threw the kick. It was him, Cheeto. He threw okay. the kick. It landed on my nerve. But it wasn't, people are saying it was a calf kick. That was, you know, your calf's near that area, obviously. But if you land a calf kick, it doesn't do that. So that's my argument, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, and I was impressed with your legs kicks. Those those really went, well, I was ah. spinning them in circles. Wasn't yeah. I? Yeah, you were definitely throwing some heat. I uh, I just said that, man, I just think that Sean's just improved so much. I have. I, and, and um. You know, I, I confronted him about the, you know, what they called slow starting. Yeah. You know, I felt like uh, he said, oh, well, he controlled his fight. You know, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, he's re reserving energy. I mean, 25 minutes is an insane amount of time to fist fight somebody. So, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, everyone has different styles. Everyone has different strategies. That's kind of his style is kind of start slow a little bit, you know, take, absorb some damage and then come, come on the later round. So. You know, that's kind of his style. That's darn right. And people have different motivations, too. My motivation is to save the world, just like the good people at Liquid Death. Why do we need to save the world? Because if we don't curb plastic waste, plastic is going to outweigh fish in the ocean by 2050. Something needs to be done. We need to bring death to plastic, and that's why it's called Liquid Death, because they're bringing death to plastic with infinitely recyclable cans of water which look like beers and it's just a lot of fun there are always kids getting in trouble at school because their teachers think they're drinking a beer and the company loves that i love it too i love everything about the company and if you think i look healthier these days you're darn right i do a big piece of that is because i'm drinking more water and you should be drinking more water too and it should be liquid death water you can find it at your local 7-eleven walmart target i mean it's literally everywhere the company is blowing up you can also get it with free shipping on amazon Amazon Prime, that's liquid death, the sparkling water, the flavored sparkling water, the still water, the iced tea, all of the flavors. I mean, the company's doing great things. I love the company. You should support them and do your part to save the world too. You can also go to liquiddeath.com slash Stevo to get all kinds of uh, fun stuff, great merch, great beverages. And one more time, let's save the world by supporting liquid death that's right and let's get back to it he's never been finished too never been dropped never even dropped yeah wow yeah I mean, we're looking at it he has this the uh, the the record for he's like three hours and 59 minutes in the octagon yeah that's just a uh, long yeah. fucking time he's got a lot of records man he's been in the ufc for a long time he's got a ton of fights very experienced very durable very dangerous opponent you would think too that uh, you've got such a reach advantage and and an inch and a half. I mean, he's he's a long dude too. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely not like one of these shorter guys like Henry or Marab or Peter. Or, you know, he's he's a decent sized bantamweight as well. Yeah, 
insane. Okay, man. Um, so uh, this is your first time getting pay per view points. <laughs> and it's <laughs> trending very well. It's. I bet it is. Um, I mean, dude, like, like a, a big fat f you to all of this whole. Oh, they're stacking the card because like. What even is that? Well, oh, they're stacking the cards so that you get more pay-per-view points. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is the narrative. But, you know, if you look historically at every time they've came to Miami, they put on crazy cards. Yeah. You know, it's not because, oh, Sean, the UFC wants Sean to be a star. Like, yeah, UFC wants a lot of people to be stars, but very few are stars because you got to go out there and perform. Look at my highlight reel. It's insane. Like, that's yeah. giving the UFC promo. They're not just pushing my name just so you see my name everywhere. They're showing you my highlights, and you guys fucking love it and eat it up. So they just keep, you know, Dude, keep I, coming. I, there's nothing that I love more than than a walk off knockout, mm. and I say that because there's not a lot that I hate more than than unconscious fighters absorbing unnecessary shots. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't. I, I cannot stand to see an unconscious fighter getting hit more times. <laughs> yeah. And and, and I I, uh, I really want to beg the UFC. I want to beg Dana to not give fifty grand fighter <laughs> bonuses to any fighter who who follows up with an unnecessary shot. I it's it's hard because when you're in the moment in the arena, um, I've knocked so many people out. I know what it feels like. But when you're a wrestler or you're somebody that's never really knocked someone out, you knock someone out for the first time, it's like you got to make sure they're knocked out. The guy, you know, it's, some people, you know, know when someone's knocked out. Some people, it's like you fight until the ref gets in between you. And if you knock someone out and they're laying there and the ref's not, you know, he's standing back too far, you got to make sure the dude's out. So I see both sides. I don't necessarily love seeing someone get hit with an extra shot either. Um, but it is, you know, if, if the ref's trying to hold you back and you're still landing shots, then it's, you know, then we get, it gets questionable, but you know, we're in there to put people's lights out and make sure they're out. Do you know when, right when you connect, you're like, oh, that guy's out. Is there like a feeling that you get like a corked bat? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, when you put some, or, you, <clears throat> or when you're hurt enough, like the Thomas Almeida fight, for example, like I, I, I dropped him twice, yeah. both times could have been stopped. They weren't. So, you know, that one ended the way it did. And, uh, that was when know. he walked off, and then he walked back, and yeah, walked off yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it has. I mean, hey, two walk offs in one fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three, three. Yeah, dude, amazing. So tell me about the ranch, dude. I just bought a ranch. Yeah, yeah. You where at? I, I, I'm in Tennessee. Okay, sweet. I bet there's some honeys out there. Not that you're looking, but. <laughs> Um, you your, your ranch is in Arizona? Yep, yep. I got a little farm. I mean, I, what, what's the difference between a ranch and a farm? I, I think that You can't eat farm? I think they're ranch, very, can, like, very no interchangeable. <laughs> I think um, ranch is more of a... Of a of dressing? A macho man uh, kind of a, a property. And I got a farm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, I got, you know, chickens, a cow that doesn't do anything, just a fucking random pet cow, no milk. Love no it. No beef, just, yeah, just wandering around, and then uh, a tortoise. H- how many acres is it? Uh, I got four right now, but five acres. Well, there was five for sale right behind my house, but now they're saying, well, they might only sell half. So I'm trying to get all five. I uh, would love to start building the compound out there, and uh, so that's the goal. And 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 the the farm, it's not where you live, or like where the. No, I live there. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. living there right now. Yeah, yeah. Wow, dude, that's epic, man. I love it. I fucking love it. It's peaceful. It's uh, you know, my raising a daughter out there, go and get the eggs, the fresh eggs. Just having to be able to walk around, play in the dirt, swing on the trees, and it's fucking perfect. Damn, yeah. epic. Um, how's uh the the happy dad money? Yeah, well, happy dad is uh you know they're they all the money they make, they're putting it back into the business. You know how that goes. Waiting, you know, make the money, put it right back in, put it right back in. But I will say it's booming. Happy dad's doing fucking incredible. They just crushed it in Canada. Um, they're coming to Montana, my home state, which is gonna be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's crushing. They cannot produce enough of that stuff. Exactly. I mean, right? that's that's the name of the game is just fucking getting it out, getting it out, getting it out because it's selling. Yeah, it is. Crazy. Um, with uh, like like just business wise, like what like uh, uh, how are you setting yourself up for beyond the career? Yeah, I mean, just making sure if 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 it's if I'm doing brand deals, not doing enough. You know, I'm, let's do a five year deal. It's like, hey, let's do a six month, nine month, twelve month deal. Because I'm about to fucking be, you know, I'm growing so much so fast right now. Um, so just aligning myself with with brands that make sense, first of all. And then, uh, you know, t- 
time frame wise, money wise, it's all got to make sense. But I've been doing pretty big brand deals for a long time now. Um, I, I kind of felt like I was the champ before I was the champ because I was making the most money in the division. I was, you know, the most popular in the in the division. But now that I'm actually the champ, the brand. I mean, they're they're beautiful. I enjoy enjoy this part of the game. I mean, dude, to your credit, you said I'm gonna be a star. I've got. I, I'm gonna be famous. Like you, you really called it a yeah. long time ago. Early on. Early on. Before, I mean, on the contender series, I was telling, I'm like, hey, you guys are gonna. I'm gonna be bigger than Connor someday, you know. But a lot. I feel like a lot of people can't do say that, so it's kind of like brushed off. But I'm when I said it, I meant it, and you know, here we are. It's, dude, it's it's incredible. Fucking man. insane. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. What what uh? You got a fleet of cars over there at the farm. Uh, not not as much anymore. Well, I still have the Lambo, but I'm getting I'm I'm you know gonna get rid of that. It's just fucking. I feel like every other every other day I'm like gotta do something with it. So I got a Sprinter van, and just a small yeah. Sprinter van, and I've just been I have an assistant who drives me around. So you know I'm I'm trying to go away from that. I'm sure I'll go through phases and get you know maybe another sports car someday. But yeah, I got a Sprinter van, and right now I'm enjoying not necessarily having to drive. That's that. It's that. nice. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm a terrible driver. I, I just <laughs> I drive too fast everywhere I go. I got a couple Teslas and those things are just fucking ridiculous. So in Arizona they have those those uh, speed yeah. light cameras. They got that just show up at your mail and you're like get oh, you. fuck, dude. Yeah. yeah, they'll get you. I got pulled over a few times, so I've been trying not to drive as much. And you don't even get pulled over though. You just get to get it in the mail. Oh, the camera cut you. Speeding. They you. Yeah, I'm never in Phoenix, like downtown Phoenix or anything. I'm out in like you know Peoria and and then I don't think they have those cameras. Uh, at least yeah. they definitely yeah yeah because <laughs> I would have gotten about thirty seven of them so far but man it uh, it, it, it it's insane man um the uh the the, the classic Snoop footage I remember yeah. everybody, who were you fighting were you fighting like Pedro Alf- Munoz and, oh. and and uh you were like oh like uh, this is Snoop's message to your girlfriend and, yeah and- no. <laughs> I, I'm like that I see I, I'm like I shouldn't have done that I look back and I'm like see I want to <laughs> keep family out of it uh so yeah. oh, I like that man yeah yeah I, I, but yeah Snoop I mean on the contender series when you oh Mally when I knocked out that kid you know that really blew me up ish i mean for when you have sure. no followers and then you have fifteen thousand followers i mean i was like holy shit that was eye-opening i'm like damn this is social media mm-hmm. like the power of social media and uh that was really what kind of shot me into a rocket ship right there that was crazy yeah how many times have you seen snoop since then uh, i haven't seen him talked to him a few times uh you know over text he, he's a part of happy dad as well he's got his death yeah, row great flavor um so i've talked to him a few different times here and there but uh, yeah, not, I don't think I've seen him since though. Uncle Snoop, yeah, dude. Uncle Snoop. Yep. What uh, like on your Instagram? I follow you on Instagram. It seems like uh, you're you're smoking reefer a, a fair amount of the time. Um, Sometimes, yeah. And uh, <laughs> how does that even work? Like you know, it's perfectly okay to smoke pot, but you can't test positive for it around around five. I think. I, I personally quit three, four weeks out. I've always done that. I've never had an issue with that. I've never been like, fuck, I'm not going to be able to smoke and fight. Like, I've never had an issue with that. But, yeah, the rule is, I think, you know, in different commissions, it's different levels of testing. But I don't know how it is in Miami. I'm not worried about it because I haven't smoked in a month or so. But Vegas, I think you could pretty much smoke fight week and still pass the test. Um, so they've been way better about that because it's fucking obviously not a performance handy drug. It's not right. a fucking steroid. So they've been cool about that. Um, yeah. What? Uh, they, they don't have USADA anymore. What, what's uh, the the whole doping? It's the same same rules, same everything, just not under USADA. It's under uh, drug free sport or some, some shit. I don't know. It's, I mean, I got I've gotten tested by them already. Do they still and, show up as much? Uh, as USADA did? Yeah. I mean, I don't know because it's only – USADA was however long it has been, and this has been, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it's been. So, I mean, I, yeah, we'll, I, I think it's the same, you know, blood work, pee, same shit. Let's be clear. When you're a fighter in the UFC, they're going to test your blood and your pee for things that should not be in there. But let's talk about the things that should be in there because I do not go anywhere without my momentous supplements. I got all my daytime supplements for my cognitive and muscle health, and then I got my nighttime supplements for my sleep and my cognitive health. That is 
the most trusted stuff out there, and that's what supplements are about, is trust. These are trusted and used by 90% of the teams in the NFL, 200 college sports teams, the United States military. Heck, it's been developed with help from Dr. Andrew Huberman. I mean, I don't trust anything more than my momentous. And here I am in Miami on my tour bus, and you better believe I don't go anywhere without it. And you can get 20% off your order from momentous if you go to livemomentous.com and use the promo code Stevo. That's L-I-V-E-M-O-M-E-N-T-O-U-S dot com and use the promo code Stevo. One more time, that's livemomentous.com. Use the promo code Stevo to get 20% off your order of the most trusted supplements out there. I mean, dude, it's not time to start taking chances with our health. So get on the Momentous program and let's get back to it. To look at you, I don't think anybody's suspecting that you're doping in any way. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, definitely not that jacked. Do they take hair samples too when they test you? Hair samples? Yeah. Um, I don't think they have. No. We uh, we just had your buddy Russ on. We were. Oh no uh, shit! Let's yeah. Go. We 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 caught him in Atlanta. Damn. Um, it. Yeah. Look, oh, that's sweet. And, and on, on the podcast, he said that uh, oh, he, he like brought up the fights. You know, yep. like he's like, I'm gonna be in Miami. Yep. I'm doing yep. I'm doing Performing. Sean's after party. Yep. And I was like, why do you think we're going through Atlanta? <laughs> you know, we're, 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 on the, we're on the way to Miami for the fights. That's I, legendary. Where, where, where's the after party at? It's going to be at 11. Um, it's crazy because Saturday, Sunday morning at 2 a.m., the time switches to 3 a.m. So it's going to be a fucking late night. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's performing. I, that For me, it's legendary. I've been listening to Russ for a long time. Not like a super long time, probably about five, six years, but very consistent. Like, I fucking I just vibe with his shit. And uh, I feel like we kind of have the similar come up we're similar age and uh so his music really speaks to me so i feel like it's gonna be a legendary after party dude i am calling it out that uh the episode after this one for everybody listening next week is russ the the following episode mm-hmm. banger i yeah. got like i got done mm-hmm. with that one i just thought wow that's uh that that's the maybe top three yeah, I he's, really... he's somewhat of a philosopher he's a smart dude he, he's uh interesting guy i've listened to him on a few different podcasts and uh his music obviously you listen to that you kind of get into someone's mind a little bit so yeah, yeah i bet that is a banger he and i really really have a similar diy approaches to okay. uh to you know creating profiles for ourselves Far. um h- how's your podcasting and everything going yeah po- i mean timbo sugar show we've been going for probably almost six years or so five six years been in- in very consistent uh, I think we're almost around episode 300 ish, somewhere around there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, right there, 275 was our last one. We had Adam Ray on. Damn, we just yeah, we had Adam. Yeah, had Adam on. Bro, yeah he's hilarious. Funny. Yeah, that that guy's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he crushed on our episode. Yeah. Man. Like yeah. he really outperformed what we thought it would be. Um, the uh, okay, so I just saw this thing. You guys, uh, you you and Timbo were making fun of uh, Ryan Garcia. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That that uh, a little, little bit yeah. of a viral thing. What what's going on there? And and do you have any thoughts of boxing? Well, Ryan went on the MMA hour and just was fucking oh. tweaking, just geeked out of his mind, saying, "I want to fight Sean. I'll kick his ass. I wrestled my security guard and and I beat him and shit." So we Tim and, and then Oscar went on fucking talk shit, saying he wants to fight Dana. So Tim and I just did a little skit, like pretended we were them before we went on the MMA hour. So it was <laughs> right. just kind of you know little jokes at them. But in reality, I mean, the dude seems like he's off his fucking rocker. I mean, first of all, to call me out is absolutely insane, but just the other shit he's talking about, I'm like, this dude's fucked. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and he said he would beat you in MMA. Yeah, that's literally drugs talking. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Yeah, oh, man. It's, uh, okay, Here, here's uh, a, a, t- a tough one. I was um, thinking about it coming down. Like, I'm actually going to be part of the, the, the press the media Ooh. thing also i'm like okay. gonna have like a little station where all the fighters yeah. like come by and stop me and yeah. you know a little uh quick quick chat type situation and i thought well if i'm in a position where i'm gonna interview uh all of the fighters at, at uh ufc 299 like uh, what's my angle and i thought maybe i should try to figure out which fighter is in possession of the most terrible tattoo 
mm. you know, and asking fighters, do you think that you uh, have a, a, you know, con- are you in contention for having the worst tattoo? And um, I, 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 please don't take this as a personal attack, but the 6 9 tattoo, I think, <laughs> is in the running. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and and as a serious question, like I know that uh, six nine and Steve will do it, like kind of fell out of yeah. love a little bit, and, and for understandable reasons, mm-hmm. like um, where are you at with that, and are we gonna get a, a laser out at any point? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Steve's my boy, and he, I guess how it goes, like six kind of fucked him over out of a lot of money, and. Uh, when we got the six nine tats, it was you know I was in Miami the first time. I just knocked out this dude. I'm hanging out with Steve. Six there. Let's get fucking tats. Steve got one. I got one. Um, and I actually scheduled something to go and uh, cover it up. But I was like, you know what? I'm so fucking over like long sessions and tattoos. So I just got some hand tats. But I did plan on cover it. And then I'm like, what, dude? Sixty nine. That's a fucking just funny number. It doesn't you know sixty nine. It is what it is. So there you go. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, it'll make you know. But I appreciate it being on the top of your list. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like uh, to, to be honest, I just I'm not that familiar with. Uh, I don't know about any tattoos. So I'm, I'm. It's the only one that I'm aware of that's a contender. Yeah. No, it's not great. Uh, <laughs> 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 I uh, man, I res- I respect that. I think you you you, you handled that uh, that that uncomfortable question very very no, well, yeah. and 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 uh, I, I super respect you just backing it. Yeah, it's a funny, yeah. It's a funny number. It's a yeah, sixty nine. I mean, it's a, you get a giggle out of it when you're in high school or when you're in middle school, and you you get your football jersey. You know the fucking fat offense lineman's like, ah, I'm gonna get number sixty nine. It's like that's fucking funny. So yeah, well, you know it it is what it is. But where where is it again? Ah, uh, okay. On my shoulder. On the, on the yeah, shoulder. All right. It's right there. I mean, dude, I was pretty ballsy even at the time when uh, then the, it was. Uh, I think the same card Connor broke his leg on, maybe. Yeah. And uh, you came out to six nine. New unreleased song. You came yeah, out to. You walked out to six nine music and yeah. and uh, man, that was like a, a memorable fight, dude. Yeah, that's when I beat up uh, the guy with the green hair. Yep, yep, Chris <laughs> Montino. That was crazy. That, that was a durable guy, man. I, I uh, he was adorable. <laughs> oh, durable. No. <laughs> felt, felt, felt pretty bad. For, yeah, my for, fucking hand still hurts. No, no. <laughs> but I feel I do feel bad because the next he went on a podcast the next week and said he trained eight days a week for that fight. I'm like, oh, I fucked this dude up. There's only seven days in a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I felt bad. I uh, I saw. Um, couple things just about this uh, fight this weekend and by the way this podcast comes out literally tomorrow so it was everyone's potentially listening to this within 24 hours of us uh, having this conversation um, I saw speculation that uh, Cheeto had a bad camp have you heard this I, I saw somewhere Aljo said that he heard a, he had a bad camp and this could be a very boring fight I'm like Aljo shut up <laughs> How could that be a boring? Uh, why? Why? What makes anyone in the world think this is gonna be a boring fight? Well, uh, but I did hear that. Um, the, the, t- to be fair, what, what I heard that Aljo said, and 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 uh, courtesy of Full Mount MMA, I watch their daily videos mm. literally every day. That's funny. I just <laughs> love Full Mount MMA. Um, uh, and, and they reported Aljo saying that um. Cheeto can win, and Cheeto's chance of winning is if the fight is boring. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I didn't look that far into it. Yeah, he uh, like uh, if 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 Cheeto can play it safe, if Cheeto can survive, you know, go the distance, then then a boring fight he could get a decision. It was Aljo's take on it, and uh, I think that um, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, well you want to say that because you know slap him. Yeah, just slept. He got slept. But yeah, I mean, as far as him having a bad camp or whatever, you know, it's nothing I can really take into consideration. I have to be prepared for the num- like Cheeto at his best. Like I can't. I'm not gonna go in there. But, oh, he had a bad camp. I'm gonna fucking do anything different. I gotta take him as he. He had a great camp. He's a dangerous guy. Um, you know, I didn't have a great camp against Aljo, and I went out there and put his lights out. So you can't really think too much into that. Yeah. No. Yeah. But um, if he says anything, let me know. Jokes, huh? Yeah. Oh, and and, th- and there was even more to it where uh, all all Joe was, was giving. A, he said, "Cheeto, if you're listening, 
this is uh he's giving him all these tips like look at where look at where sean had success you know like sean had success counter when people are 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 coming in so i really did have success (laughs) (laughs) wow what advice yeah like uh be careful don't be reckless you know Mm. like uh don't be reckless coming in crazy don't get hit (laughs) yeah that's good advice i like that man i i i am a fan of yours brother (laughs) i appreciate it brother I think it would be difficult to not be a fan of Sean O'Malley. And before we meet the terrifying Ecuadorian gangster who is Cheeto Vera, let me tell you about the ridiculously awesome deal that DraftKings Sportsbook, the official betting partner of the UFC, is offering for UFC 299. If you are a new customer of DraftKings Sportsbook and you make a deposit of five dollars or more then you can get what's called a no sweat bet up to one thousand dollars what's a no sweat bet well it's a bet up to one thousand dollars that if you lose they will uh just let you bet again they will effectively give you back the money you lost to bet again. That is a ridiculous deal and it's good for up to a thousand bucks. I mean, bless these guys. Plus, they asked me to make my picks for the main card of UFC 299. And I said, like, how am I gonna do that? I'm buddies with Cheeto and with Sean. But then I said, you know what? Screw it. So let's talk about the main card. The first fight is Piotr Jan versus Song Yadong. And if you think I'm going to bet against a guy whose name is Yadong, you're out of your mind. So I'm going Song Yadong. He's an underdog. I'm picking a lot of underdogs. MVP versus Kevin Holland. This is Michael Venom Page's first fight in the UFC. He's a huge superstar, yet he's an underdog against Kevin Holland. I'm going MVP. Next, we got Gilbert Burns. He's a big underdog against Jack Maddalena. Maybe not a big underdog, but... I'm going with the dog, Gilbert Burns. And then what do we got? Dustin Poirier against the god of war, Benoit Saint-Denis. Poirier's the underdog? I'm going for Poirier. I love that guy. And then out of my two buddies, you know what? My rationale here is that Marlon Chitovera defeated Sean O'Malley in their first match. And... I'm going with Sean O'Malley to get the win on this one because the world would love to see a trilogy, isn't that right? So I'm going with Sean O'Malley. But if you're going to do it, then do it with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official betting partner of the UFC, and do it by downloading the DraftKings Sportsbook app and using the promo code Stevo. Have a good fun. I can't even tell you. I'm so excited. For UFC 299. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit www.1800Gambler.net. In New York, call 877 Hope NY or text Hope NY to 467 369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort KS, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash MMA terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. And now, let's say what's up to Cheeto Vera. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Marlon Cheeto Vera. What's up, bro? Yeah, dude. Great <laughs> Good to see you, you, man. Likewise, brother. Likewise. Yeah. We've been talking about having you on the podcast for a long time. And uh, what an exciting time. Now you're fighting for the belt. It's the best time to do it. Ready for a big fight. We got a lot of things to talk, and I'm excited, man. I'm I'm happy, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Let's first uh, remind everybody or let them know how many records you have. It may, that we, I didn't even realize the uh, the most octagon time in the bantamweight division, the, the most finishes, or tied for the most finishes. In the- I think I'm tied, yeah. Yeah, the uh, you have th- what, three hours and fifty nine minutes in the octagon. Fuck, I'm a hustler, man. <laughs> it's a long yeah, time. Uh, I, well, this is my twenty third fight, I believe. Yeah, in the UFC. And you've got uh, you've never been finished, only losses by decision. That, I know. That, that that's amazing. Yeah, like I mean, I just give credit to consistency, uh, staying in shape, uh, hard work, and. 
And fucking, when you get there, sometimes a lot of people is ready. But I feel like mentally, they kind of like break or just kind of like, they say, I can live another day. Yeah. I don't want to live another day. I want to fucking give my best. And I think that's it. Just yeah. immigrant mentality. We spoke to Mike, Michael Chandler about uh, that brutal knockout of uh, Tony Ferguson where like you see that photo and the, and the foot yeah. but you came first your foot to Frankie Edgar yeah that came like a few weeks before I believe. yeah yeah, yeah. The, the side by side of, of your foot and Frankie Edgar face with uh, Michael Chandler and Tony Ferguson like th those two images are the craziest those are pictures. heavy those are heavy pictures whoever took the pictures an asshole <laughs> 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 that's um, a heavy picture, I know. I know, and, and it's only because of uh, video cameras that shoot like thousands of frames per second. I know, when I saw that picture the next day, I was like, fuck. Like, I was like, that one, I wouldn't even post that one. That's, yeah. that, 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 that's a fuck you picture right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a heavy one. Right. Uh, so, so now you just sat down, you brought your own coffee, we've got a drink here. As a fighter, or then this is just... Oh, it's sparkling water, uh, I can drink this. Water, yeah. Yeah. But as a fighter... How much are you like, oh, I don't know, like, I, I, you know, with, with uh, with I'm very skeptical with a lot of things, but water, and I'm familiar with liquid dead, so yeah. I drink uh, carbonated water often, especially when you're cutting weight, make you feel more fuel. Yeah. But, like, if, let's say, for example, I have a, a rash or a cut, and you tell me, like, use this, I will call USADA before anything. I will call my nutritional people that knows ingredients and shit, because... That's what people test positive. Yeah. And that's on you. Like, if you have a headache and someone gives you a pill, that's on you. Like, would yeah. you have drank that if it was already opened? Or because you opened it yourself, you were comfortable drinking it? A hundred percent. If you already opened, I would even touch it. <laughs> I would toss it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's coming from... My friend or someone on my crew. Yeah. Yeah. I would do it for in front of Steve. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I certainly don't want to. I don't even like talking to fighters in before fights. You know, like this, this is a little weird for me. But like my my friends are fighters. Like, wait a minute. I remember you talked to him in San Diego. That's true. Thirty seconds to... before his fight or whatever it was. Well, yeah. But... No, you know what? Like uh, that's true. You were uh, you were he headlining a fight night San in San Diego. Yeah, with Cruz. And yeah, I get, against Dominic Cruz. I saw you right before the fight. So I, no, yeah, we, we were pulling into the I, parking I, lot. I, I texted and, you that day, and Steve's, I was like, go get him. Yeah, Steve's talking to you. I'm like, like who's that? He's like, that's Cheeto. I'm like, dude, he's fighting tonight. Like, he's yeah. like, yeah, he's but ready. Some calls, you're like, like there, there's like people calling me every other hour. Numbers that I don't even have, right? People just find my phone number, and they, I don't even know what they want. They just, some people just want an interview. Some people just want to say, like, how are you doing? But... If if you're not my family, part of my team, I'm I'm just gonna be like pretty sound out. But if Steve will call you, I mean, you you pick up. It's Steve. -O. Does it I say mean, Steve? -O? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great. I have his phone number, so that that's pretty rad. Funny story. When I was a kid, my group of friends used to call me Cheeto. So nice. that's a uh, in, in pay, 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 paying um, respect because we used to do stupid shit too. Yeah. And then we used to have a camera to film it. <laughs> what does Cheeto mean? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the O stands for. Yeah. That's, the, that's my nickname when I was a kid. And my mom called me like that since before I know how to speak. So Cheeto. Maybe, maybe because I'm this, the smallest one of the whole family. Hmm. The, uh, so God knows. You had such, a, such an intense run. With like the the Frankie Edgar knockout, I mean, just every time like uh, like Dominic Cruz was was a, was a great one, and then the the Corey Sandhagen fight and uh, that the, the, whatever was was your last fight, they started calling you. They started saying Cheeto starts slow, but you didn't used to start slow. Yeah, I mean, it's an opinion, yeah. and sometimes an opinion can get to your head and then you your next fight you go like okay I'm gonna show you how fast I can start and then you go crazy and then you get hurt and yeah. then you go like fuck I should keep my style I keep it cool I don't give a fuck what the opinions say I don't give a fuck what the commentator says and most of them are my friends but they also doing their job yeah. and sometimes they also hear people like oh I started slow all this and that I'm like I'm more of a fuck you mentality. I'm like, kiss my ass. I'm going to fight the way I fight. If I win like that, you yeah. can suck my dick. Because at the end of the day, they're fun fights. So, like, 
honestly, we just I pay attention with Perillo says. Perillo is like, look, dude, you're fine. I mean, you can always start a little. You can always put numbers more together. You can do this. You can always improve. That's for sure. There's always room for improvement. But I'm not gonna be like, oh fuck, they're talking about this and that. I just find a way to fight. I like to fucking study. I like to like dissect things. I like to see the speed and I have great defense. So yeah. if the defense is working, why am I gonna like change it? Right. I'm not changing that at all. I'm I'm fighting the way I fight. Yeah. I mean, you, you certainly didn't start slow when you fought Sean O'Malley the first time. Yeah. What do you think about Sean O'Malley that says uh, he's undefeated? I always ignore it. I was more like, dude, let it go. Forget about it. No one really gives a fuck about it. Like, you went out, you went out again, and you won a few fights. I went out, won a few fights. I got to fight a few main events, so I have the experience now. I focus on myself, but all of that, I feel fighters like that, they need to get to your head. They they think if they go, fuck you, you suck, you're going to be like, oh, angry. I'm like, dude, I'm from Ecuador. I don't give a fuck what you say. But if we're in this close distance and you say something like that, I'm going to move the mic and kick your ass. But, like, <laughs> it's just the way I am. Like, I'm yeah. nice. I, I keep it cool. Yeah. I won't disrespect anybody just because I'm a fighter. But if you start right. going crazy on me, I'm not going to talk. I'm going to throw you something. The phone, the coffee, the fucking water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, So, like, I heard one, there's an interview that Helwani asked me what was going on before the fight. And like they like to like scream. This is something they always do. They start talking shit from the far away. And I'm like, how childish is that shit? I'm gonna get in a cage with this fucker and you guys are screaming. That's weak to me. I'm like, yeah, cool. If you think that's gonna good luck trying to like get me upset with that. Yeah. But like I mean, I just feel like that's a low level way to like get in someone's head. Best way to get in someone's head is punch him straight in the face. <laughs> and be like, I'm ready to fight you, and then what? You gotta figure it out. Yeah. The last time you guys fought was during the pandemic. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you prefer fighting with or without a crowd? I have, I have a good type of fun on both. With the crowd, is definitely the the show added. There's you know there's celebrities on the front row. It's a big thing. Every every punch, every scramble, the crowd goes crazy. The apex is just fucking dark and intense and. I like both sides. Yeah. I really enjoy both sides. I think, I mean, kicking Cruz in the head with a full arena was cool. But beating the fuck out of Font in an empty arena was also fun. So I do both. I, I see a lot of people and fans complaining about, like, delete the Apex, no more Apex. I'm like, I love the Apex. Yeah. The Apex was a great setup. And why not? Are you ever fighting, like, when it's a, a full arena or, you know, a stadium and you're like, Look in the front row. You're like, oh shit, that's Justin Bieber. And then, but you're like, oh fuck, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta focus. I, I really try to don't make eye contact with people because it's definitely it, it can get it can get to you. Like one time, I was like normally try to 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 find my wife, my wife, and kind of like yeah, to blow her a kiss or whatever. But in the in the way through that, I find like all these people. Yeah, like I'm like, oh, I don't want to see my friend love <laughs> because sometimes you go like, come on, let's go. I'm like, not right now. Not right now. Yeah. <laughs> I like in San Diego, the first person I make eye contact with was Action Bronson. I was like, oh, hi, I love you too. Okay. We'll talk later, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Them right before, like, I had Rob Machado, like, right in, in my back. And I'm like, hey, Rob. Oh, yeah, I know. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. But you don't, I don't want to be talking to people I know. Like, if it's someone that is just popular, I don't care. But if it's like my friend, I'm like, I know. I know you're nervous too. I got it. <laughs> Don't let me know anything. Cool. I but was like, sitting right next to you, Rob Machado. Oh, you were there too? Yeah. So you uh, there, there's a sick picture of when the fight's over. I like Rob is like just going crazy after the fight. Yeah. So I, yeah, I have the picture. So you put it right next I to have, him. I'm sure I'm right next to him. Uh, have you ever served with Rob Machado? I have I haven't served yet, but he he made me a board and oh, it's wow. one of my best boards. And I heard I don't know I don't know if it's a fact, but I heard he hung made that one for me. So when I heard that, I stopped using it. I'm like, that's gonna go to the, my wall. That's great, man. Yeah. You uh, you served with my friend Zeke. Yeah, Zeke is the man. That's my boy. Yeah. Yeah, I love Zeke. I know you guys always hang out. Yeah, he's he's great. I I, I go I go sometimes to La Jolla to 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 visit them and they're cool people. And then when they're in town in Newport, they come see me all the time. 
Yeah, we gotta surf together. Man. Yeah, we should I, one day. I, I'd love that. You're pretty good at surfing. I'm pretty decent. At, how, how's the surf in Ecuador? It's great, man. It's amazing and uncrowded. There's not a big surf community. Wow. Like that, sometimes there's a spot that they just they're just not put out there. Like even Kelly was asking me one day, like, dude, you know this person? He sent me like a IG post. I'm like, where is that? I'm like, dude, that's like 15 minutes from my house. That's like one of the best rides. But surfing is just not a, it's not a, I don't, it's popular in Ecuador, but just like, sometimes when there's big swells, there's like 12 spots, just no one's there. It's crazy, man. We, we've traveled the world surfing. We went to Madagascar. It oh, took wow. like four flights to get there and then out on a boat in the middle of the ocean and every wave was crowded. That, in Ecuador, there is, Ecuador is ready to be explored. I don't know if surfers out there would like what I'm saying, but there's there's not too much people in the water when it's yeah. really good. The surfers are not gonna like saying that. Um, <laughs> so, I'm saying it. They're, they should be, they should be supportive of me. <laughs> I support them too. Yeah. Um, now, with, like with all the uh, the people talking about about fighter pay, and it's it's interesting that different fighters have have different opinions, but. Um, the the fact is that the expense of the camp and then you got to you got to pay the coaches you got to you got to pay the the manager you got to pay the agent you know like what is uh it is it's tough being a fighter didn't somebody just retire just because it's too expensive to fight yeah but this this is how I'm going to say it. there's a lot of Fuck you, Dana, you're too rich, blah, blah, blah. But also, Dana White didn't, wasn't born rich. Jesse was friend with the Fertitas, and they help each other. They, they, make, they create an idea, and it's like business. Sometimes yeah. you invest in something and it becomes nothing, and sometimes look at the UFC right now. Yeah. So good job on that for them. That motherfucker is a hustler. and He's the greatest guy in the world. That, to me, like... That guy is, like, I admire him. Like, a lot of people hate him. A lot of fighters, like, get really bitchy, like, fuck this guy, pay me. I'm like, dude, if you wouldn't been, if you wouldn't go to college, you wouldn't be in a fucking office right now, and what you would tell to your shitty boss? Fuck you, you get fired. Yeah. If, if you work construction and you tell the guy, fuck you, I want 10 more bucks, you get fired. The UFC is probably the only job that you can say, fuck you to Dana White, and just keep your job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but in my opinion... Yeah. I, I tell you my own story. I don't really give a fuck about other fighters, but I tell you my own story. I couldn't move my family from Ecuador, get a house in Newport Beach, invest my money in houses ar around the, the States by, by selling cheese in Ecuador. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By working with my dad in the farm. I wouldn't have this life without the UFC. So did I want more money? A thousand percent. I want to pay my coach more? A thousand percent. I want to take care of my team? A thousand percent. But... That's on me. I mean, if I get a big sponsor, I mean, cut pieces to my people. Why not? But fighters always are like, oh, I want to make $10 million. Oh, Canelo make that. Yeah, Canelo is the 1%. Floyd yeah. Mayweather is the 1%. Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor is the 1%. There's no more of those like that. They, they almost came once every 10 years. And that's just... Yeah. You, so people have used more light and more... Um, not an easy road. You, they just... They just doing you know like they're freaks john jones they don't come like that every other week there's yeah. a lot of great fighters there's a lot of champions there's a lot of people but it comes with a lot of things it comes with personalities you can be asking for a lot if you fucking look like a dry egg i mean that's <laughs> that's not what's fault if you're not fun if you don't have a charisma yeah. for this shit that's fantastic man i wow. love dana man i mean and don't get me wrong i want more money but i think dana is the shit I mean, Dana says it all the time. Everybody wants more. There's no such thing as anybody who doesn't want more money. And, I mean, uh, who doesn't want more money, <laughs> right, right? Right. So yeah, and, and I'm not trying to like create, you know, controversy or. or no, but it's it's a, it's, it's like, a good question because some other fighters would probably say, "Fuck him! I need more! I want this! I want that!" I'm like, I like to see it this way. You want it? Go and get it. You want to get paid? Yeah. Fucking put some motherfucker upside down, kick him in the face, or be the fucker of someone. Yeah. Make 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 people excited. Yeah. If you get in there and and hug someone for twenty five minutes, good luck getting paid in this game. Yeah, I, I love that. You know what else I, I love is when I see you at the fights and you're dressed up in the suit because you're doing the commentary. 
I like to uh... <laughs> that like uh, I mean, I mean fighting careers they're, they're they're not they're not forever they're not you know? like uh and, and and it really it makes me happy like even like Dominic Cruz you know like uh, I, I tell Dominic Cruz that I don't worry about him getting in the octagon and and uh, like losing like you know like because because he's got himself set up he's beyond right. that and that's one thing that <clears throat> most athletes don't get it yeah they only go like oh fuck I'm the shit I'm the shit and then two years from now you're like you're yeah. homeless. No one, no one pay attention to you. But you have to understand that. I know before it get to this point, this is gonna be gone one day. Yeah. Like it's just the way it is. It happens to everybody. Yeah. Like it's just it's life. It's just the cycle of it. There's there's pe more people doing what you used to do. They do it better. They're more funnier or whatever. They 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 look better doing it, and more population. So it's like you gotta figure it out while you're the best. How to put something aside for later on? Yeah, you said that you bought, you invest in properties. You have had houses. That's what I do. Um, and I'm, I'm an investor. That's great, man. <laughs> that, that. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's just, it's just common sense. I mean, if yeah. you, if, if, if you start to, to get a, a decent pay here and there, don't blow it. I mean, yeah, don't. The, but also the biggest problem with social media today, everybody compare themselves like, holy shit, this guy have like a custom Rolls Royce. I don't like that. I don't yeah. grow up liking that. But I like classic cars. I see a Grand National and I fucking my D guitar. So it's like, <laughs> it's different. But it's still yeah. like, I, 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 I do a few things for fun. Like, okay, I like these type of things. I'm going to get them. But in the meantime, I'm like, where I, where I can put my money, where I can go, which states are better for rent or whatever. And I just don't post about it or talk about it because yeah. it's silly. You don't see uh, wealthy people going... Hey guys, I just get a new restaurant. Like they just, you know, they just keep moving because yeah. it's not about to impress. It's just to keep my family safe the rest of the life. So, I mean, people gotta be more smart out there. I think. That's it. That, that's fantastic, man. Um, so, like with, with the commentating. I love that. I you, really love. You, so you're the Spanish language uh, commentator. Like, there's different types of of Spanish. So. Do you have like that for Spain is different than for Mexico and it's different? Well, the language is the same, yeah. but the accent and some dialects will change. But for example, I believe when we do the commentary, it's for the US and from and from some South American countries because other places have fox, <clears throat> other places have their own. So it's where by the rights. So I think we're m more uh, dominant in the US for ESPN. And then some uh, Spanish countries, but the the reason I love it is is because I get to watch the fight. I, if it's up to me, I will go to every single fight card. Yeah. Do you, I, yeah, you have the monitor in front of you. Like, yeah, it's amazing. Right, right up against the octagon. I mean, it, it, it's silly. We're like away from the octagon in a oh. desk. But I mean, just what I do, I just turn my seat around and I watch live. Yeah. And I use I use to speak as, as it goes, and it's amazing. It's really amazing. You ever do commentary with Alexa Grasso? Mm, I, did, I think I, don't, I saw her on the Mex uh, Mexico City. Yeah, Park. no, she no, she's been doing it lately. Poncinibio does it. Uh, Brandon Moreno does it. I don't think I have. I I I work more with Brandon and Santiago. Okay. Yeah, the, the, those are the two main guys that I'm always with sharing the desk. Yeah, um, and and does commentating pay pretty well? Not in Spanish. Okay. It is, but, but that's also it's in a Spanish thing. Go back to Ecuador, you won't make too much money. Yeah. But my goal is to move to the English side. That's my goal as a commentator. Okay. When I retire, I want I, I want to do for the English side. So, um, when, for for uh, pay per views to get points, like a percentage of the pay per view revenue, you have to be the champion. You have to be the champion. Yeah. Challengers don't get it. The uh, man, man you're, you're you're this close, man. That close, man. That close. I know. The the when, when you fought. Sean O'Malley the first time like there, there's controversy about what what you know what happened like, like oh he turned like this something happened he did he hurt himself like as I understand it it was masterful leg kicking you got that nerve and the nerve went out and that's what happened yeah. 
that's I can explain it other way than that. And I get it. That he he also tried to put like a, I mean probably he was he's that cocky that he's like home oh, like guys like that they can take loses like that. I mean, Garvin was a killer. He lost one time and his career went sideways, right? Mm-hmm. Not knocking on him, but there's some there's few guys out there that they're undefeated and they lose one time and oh, they're like. I mean, see, we're watching it happen to Volk right now. <clears throat> it's see how many years with the, that head kick. The, the head kick was what took his career away because he was yeah. short notice. He wasn't in shape. And that just set you a few years back. Not but even a few years back, it's like that's like what the Chuck Liddell. The, yeah. Why is it because it like fucks with your timing and shit? I, bro, it's your brain, dude. If you get your brain shot like that, I'm guessing your brain shut down on his own to protect you. Yeah. Because when your body's not used to go there, when you get KO like that, you have to take good time off, do some scans, like figure it out your brain health. And slowly get back to training. You can just think like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna fix this." It's your brain, dude. Like, and especially when you get kicked in the face like that, you can just come back like nothing happened. Mm. Yeah, that's they gonna say, that take a few years for your life. They say that you develop a glass jaw. You, you that, that's a hundred percent. Yeah, we can get him some Neuralink, and he'll be right in there and fucking. Like I'm all about health, dude. I do everything, coming from food to machines. So you just stay healthy, dude. Yoga? I do yoga. I use hyperbaric machine. I use Seabuck machine. Cold plunge? I have one at home. I have a sauna. I do. I, I just bought a, a hyperbaric for my own house. I'm all about red light bed. Dude, I spend <laughs> like an extra two hours a day just doing this type of shit. It's tedious because yeah. I want to hang out with my family. I want to be with my kids. I want to be present. But, but also, you don't want to just train, train, train. And them use wear and tear. Right. Like I just feel like that helps with everything. It helps with my skin. Helps with taking a shot. Mm-hmm. Helps with my brain. With recover. My organs work well. So, with the fight being so close, are you still in the gym as much as you can? Or like right now? Yeah, like right now. Like this wig is just hitting me. It's here and there. Just yeah. keeping the 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 nervous system is sparkling. Like staying sharp, but not too much. Mm-hmm. Like the hard work is done. <laughs> yeah. Because we. We spar pretty hard few week, for the last few weeks. So mm-hmm. that's really when you really learn how to fight. Yeah. I don't care. There's, I don't care what you do. If you don't spar hard, you're not getting the, 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 the timing because your timing, your eyes, everything, you don't get that thing looking good hitting the back. Mm-hmm. The, the hitting the back and hitting me to help for other things, but you need to spar. Yeah. And we spar pretty fucking hard. Are you doing saunas and ice baths this week or that's out too? Um, normally, I do my last, I did my last one the last two days. Right before I jump in the plane, I jump in the ice. And this week, I do it in, in, my, in, my, in my bath. I, I put like a few bags of ice. Yeah. But I do that before and after the wake up. Mm. Just to like cool down. Fuck. Um, <clears throat> how much weight do you have to cut? To make one thirty five. Um like right now, like probably fifteen more pounds, something like that. Wow. This the stand that I will say. Not not something that I'm too worried, but something that I still gonna be fucking hard. Yeah. And I feel we all do the same. Doesn't matter how you do it, what you it's But what about like uh I mean s- s- somebody who goes to the the, the weigh in and they weigh three pounds less than like it's obvious that they didn't cut anything right so the the other fighter has the advantage in that situation it it does and it don't because the big guy have a puncher chance in the first round but after that he's gonna gas like yeah. my dream weight will be fight at 155 not cutting way full ribeye a pound of liver half avocado with honey and i would jump to the cage 155 but fuck, dude. Chandler would probably break my neck. Island would probably break my legs. I mean, they're just too big because those guys are cutting for two hundred pounds. Yeah. Most likely. Okay. I met I met forty fivers out of camp that I'm like, hold if I don't even come to the gym, I don't want to train with you. Yeah. Like they're huge. They're like one eighty five. Ilya Tupori is a big boy. He's a big guy. <laughs> so like, when when people say like calling out the bigger guys i'm like it this is not boxing boxers are like similar in weight these motherfuckers are like 
you're a kid and those are those can be adults yeah. and especially 35 i walk around 155 158 that's my healthy doing everything i can to be healthy weight and it's fucking gnarly still so you're not trying to um go up to featherweight <clears throat> fuck no <laughs> especially because i'm not because i'm not i'm not too big for my own work i'm tall i'm lanky like i'm a big 35er yeah. but i'm not even a decent 45er in terms of weight yeah. I, but i mean i'm ballsy you put you offer me the money fight anybody yeah that's for sure <laughs> so you gotta with, with with sean o'malley you gotta just you just gotta get in there close the distance like just fight him just 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 figure it out touch him and i know one thing i can dig deep i know he's he moves well side to side he faints a lot i'm sure he's very athletic he's quick but rangy but so do i we have almost the same length on okay. legs and arms wow like we it's i think he have like half an inch more than me all right so, and uh and, and you're grappling stronger i believe i believe so i mean i train I trained with Art of Jiu Jitsu. Guy Mendes is the fucking best Jiu Jitsu instructor in the world. And those guys that he have for me there all the time, there's like all world class Jiu Jitsu guys. Like not even, like I get rugged though when I'm there. But I'm there often. I'm not there like just for camp. I'm in and out of camp. So I'm good to go everywhere the fight goes. We, we can grapple, we can clinch, we can wrestle. I'm ready for this fucking fight. When, when, when you're in your corner in between rounds, does, uh, because they're, they're maybe your last fight, I'm thinking like, you know, I like, like through the TV, I want to scream like, like, uh, Cheeto, it's the, the immigrant mentality. Just go, go, go. <laughs> in, in the last <laughs> fight against Pedro, that, you're talking about the San Hagen fight. I, I think like, uh, I think it was your last fight. I La, remember like, last time uh, was Pedro and, I felt in control the whole time. I was using my jab. I was touching with the jab. I was kicking his leg and I was like, coach told me between rounds, like try to finish him. He's never been finished, try to finish him. But Pedro is really good at getting, if when he gets hurt, he dips his head and starts swinging crazy. Why get caught in exchange like that? I was yeah. like, you know what? This tonight, I need to win because they're, they're fighting for the belt in my weight class. If everything goes right, most likely I'm fighting for the belt. So. I, I was being more calculated for business okay. because I rewatched the fight with Pedro. I was in control 15 minutes. I used my, like good boxers that I trained with, that I sparred with, they text me, dude, the job was on point. You pimp him. I'm like, I get it. MMA fans, they think that's boring because they, they, they want to go blow for blow, yeah. no technique, head down, cholo mode. I don't do that. All right. I can do that if I, if I have to. If I'm behind, I can say, fuck you, spit on the ground, hold my ground. <laughs> but if I don't have to, why not? If I don't yeah. have to, I just, I just pimp you. Yeah. Okay, man. I, uh, and um, do you pay attention to the, the, the betting odds uh, on a fight? I don't even know where they are. I don't see them. I hear people talking about it. Oh, you're off ever. Oh, you're under. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter to me. Right. Like, really, it doesn't matter to me. It's something that is not in my head. When you just, when uh, Marab just fought Henry Cejudo, did you watch that? Yeah, I watch it. Marab looks scary. He looked good. Yeah, yeah he looked good. Henry yeah. looks old too. Yeah. Uh, the second I mean, round, he was fully gassed out. Yeah, I think uh, Henry definitely lost that fight. That was. Not oh, he lost the fight. That, it wasn't that, even close. Not controversial. So. But guys like that, they're now they're he's pushing to stay in the game. You should retire. And and I'll tell you this. Remember the immigrant mentality? Yep. <laughs> That's right yeah. here, trust that, me. Yeah, that, like when, <laughs> when, when you're in the corner and you're, if it's going into the fifth round, just think, just look at Sean O'Malley and just think, he is a customs person <laughs> trying to keep you out of the country. <laughs> I'm in the border <laughs> with my <laughs> kids, <laughs> pulling the metal. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, that's a great way to see it. Like, motherfucker, yeah. I lost my green car yeah. and he's about to kick me out back. <laughs> I'm in the river fucking going like, yeah. yeah. And then I see him at the other side, I'm going like, motherfucker, I go under. Yeah. I got it. I got, I got it. it. Man. I yeah. got it. Oh, yeah, brother. Uh, yeah, sick. Chico, good luck, man. Appreciate and, you, bro. Uh, and thank you, dude. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, for sure, of course. There you have it, folks. Episode 203 of 
the Wild Ride podcast. And uh, what can I say, man? We're in, in Miami. I've never participated in an actual fight week. I've been to a bunch of fights, but like walking around the fighter hotel, like all of this uh, crazy media day, you can kind of tell that these guys go through it on fight week, man. Like Sean O'Malley was kind of like quick answers, like, all right, I've done a thousand interviews, you could tell, and good thing I was prepared to, to keep it going, keep it moving. Um, the, the podcasts have been, I feel like, really good lately. And I made a rule that every episode I uh, prepare with like a full list of talking points, which I sneakily look down and check every once in a while. Um, I think it's helped, man. I'm really trying hard to get better at this. And you know what I'm gonna say now. Those of you who stick around to the very end, I love you. I love you so much. Um, we've actually got a couple new things that, that uh, we're working on. We're gonna get samples for um, some Wild Ride Street Team merch and Radical Ranch merch. Um, very excited and I wanted to tell you guys about it first. I love you. Enjoy the fights this weekend and be well. Yeah.